We moved in yesterday. Oh, was it yesterday? We closed on our house a week ago Thursday. Oh, the, the movers came. The movers didn't come to unload both the pods. We have so many stories to tell, but I thought we'd just focus on this morning when we woke up with all of our stuff scattered about the house. <laughs> And we thought we had some of the basics where we needed it. <laughs> and first, you went to take a shower. I think so. Oh, well, no, actually, going to the Lowe's to pick up a rod for the just the yes. hang, the uh, yeah. rod that shower the curtain. Did fit shower. So you went and got a got curtain, a rod. curtain rod and put up the shower curtain. Then it was the hunt for soap. Because you used shampoo. Which we didn't <laughs> find it before you showered. Soaped up my head really. Because I got a lot of hair. And then just wash my body with that same soap. So I went around singing, oh, I wish I were a little bar of soap. Because we had like all our other toiletries, but our bar of soap. So I'm opening boxes. Meanwhile, you decide to get ready for work because you have some appointments today. Yes, and so I'm trying to find my computer. And I thought I lost my computer. And it searched and searched called out well i I said my mom has caregivers for my dad i said i think today's the day when it's an afternoon caregiver not a morning so just call mom so you call her because we had been staying at her mom's for the last a week week, uh in waiting to to move in so you call her and and she's in a she's on the decompression uh a table at her chiropractor (laughs) says she answers the phone so i said why did you answer the phone but uh, she couldn't help me, so I ended up calling into to the house. Like you said, you had a caregiver there. Talking to her, she searched around the house to see if I'd left it there, couldn't find it there. Kept searching and searching, digging up, looking through. Meanwhile, I'm looking through boxes for soap, finding <laughs> everything but soap. And I never knew I'd be so excited when I found a box and it actually had bars of soap in it. And I... Finally came back into this this little room we're in right now, which is kind of the spare room, the extra room, and uh, just happened to notice it underneath a shelf. Oh, there's yeah, there's a little end table in here. A little end table, and there's a shelf, and it was kind of back in the back of that. So we found that, got that straightened out. And all the stories that go through our head in the process, like we love the people that unloaded us. They're the same people that. Because we packed our own boxes, but they loaded the pods up for us, and then they unloaded yesterday. But my mind goes to, you know, someone steal it. Yeah, yeah, that went through that too. Then also this morning, I had thrown in a load of wash uh, into our new, well, not new, there the how the washer and dryer that were left here at the house. They are com- commercial grade Maytag, so we're uh, like, oh, wonderful. Yeah, but maybe not so wonderful because. The dryer's not drying really well. The dryer's not drying. So I had to get a hold of our, we have a warranty now on our home, a home warranty. And so I had to call them, get that all straight out. They almost weren't going to do it because the payment hadn't come in from the lawyers. Oh, really? On the closing. <laughs> That's still so, getting settled. So she said it usually takes a while, but she was nice enough to go ahead and put in a request. So we're waiting for oh. Call. I didn't know about that little caveat that yeah, got so in the way. Just, it's been it's the fun of moving it. And everybody, I think we've had more people tell us that, you know, it it's a life of confusion for the next probably couple of weeks, I would imagine. And we begin. look at our language of how we phrase that. Is it, it's going to be a little more challenging finding things rather than painting the picture that it's going to be a life <laughs> of confusion. <laughs> Talking about using our words with intention and manifesting what we desire. This is a very long story. This is Gina. And I'm Don. And this is Focused Healthy Family. And thank you for joining us because we did not have a podcast last week. The first time we missed a week because we were at closing. And I don't know the podcast number. I think it's 81. I think it's 81. So so. It's a random number podcast. <laughs> but we'll count it as 81, I think, because I believe that's where we were. Because we missed, and we apologize, we missed last week, but it's been, that was a crazy packing time. Uh, Thursday uh, was closing. Well, the day that the podcast was due to air was closing day. Yeah, and trying to get one done on that Wednesday when we were trying to get out of the house. We were there till 
one thirty in the morning, you know. Give the so, stuff but today we're just kind of generally talking about uh, communication. We've got an interesting quote that we're going to do here in a minute, but let's give it a break for our sponsor. Our sponsor is Q Sciences. I've been a representative for Q Sciences for over a year. I found this company through a friend and did some research and reading about these products. And I really like what I found when I learned about them, the research and time that they've put into the quality of these products to be better absorbed into the body. Things like the vitamin D spray. Our youngest was on a capsule vitamin D and yet vitamin D levels remained the same with follow-up checkups. And with the spray, it increased. It increased pretty, pretty strong. Almost double. Yeah. And I mean, we're talking her levels were maybe 20. And I think, I want to say they went up to 47 or something around that range. And the, the sleep spray is another great one. It's got melatonin, 5-HTP, and I believe another herbal supplement in there. And because it's a spray, you spray it on your tongue, it gets absorbed more quickly into your body to be more effective to help you in the moment. We're using the B12 spray. We've used the vitamin C spray. They have a Q-Max product, which is a multivitamin. And they also have the CBD, different, uh, a, a variety of different uh, it's full spectrum, full spectrum oils. Yeah. They even have a THC-free version. It comes in different flavors. There is a mushroom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, armor. It's called Q Armor. It's a powder, and I get the chai flavor. Put it in my chai tea for a double chai drink. So in, instead of, uh, as they say, w flushing your supplements down well, the toilet or the drain, you want to get something like this that, that's fully absorbed. It's like flushing money down the toilet too if you're not using a supplement that absorbs well and does well for your body so that's what q science is really about it's a good uh well absorbed high nutrient product they have multiple products they have child specific products they now also have some facial cream products um i've been using a night cream <laughs> to um minimize the effects of sunlight and stress and aging on my skin and they have oh they have a hemp um, lotion that's also a wonderful product that we've tried so check us out learn more you can find the link at our website www.focusedhealthyfamily.com you can also go to focusedhealthyfamily.com forward slash q sciences the letter q and sciences with an s at the end with the s at the end yes So this is how to be good at talking. You start with a polite greeting. Then you give your name, a, a relevant personal link, and then you manage expectations. So, hello, my name is Anigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> polite greeting, name. <laughs> relevant personal link and manage expectations it's from one of our all-time favorite movies if you don't know it's from the princess bride yes and that is the whole premise of the movie is he's trying to find the six-fingered man who killed his father well and we're kind of you know just generally talking about communication and how important it is because we've had to do a lot of good communication here lately just with all the buying and selling of uh, properties the communication has to be very important to get everything. And we luckily, you know, our agent. Yes, shout out to Scott Carpenter. He lives uh, through OfferPad. He's an amazing realtor in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. But yeah, we were in constant communication with him over text, over email, by phone. Any issues we had, we, we were always open with him and he was open with us. And it made for a much smoother process. Yeah, he was very straightforward too. He didn't, you know, it didn't. Which he thoroughly he would, appreciate. Yeah, he would look at a home and and uh, 
kind of critique it in a good in a good way, but also po he'd point out the the bad as well as the good, or the you know the things that we'd want to watch out for. And it took us this well. This was number five uh, that, that we, we put made off on. Yeah, we, we're not sure when we started looking. There's a little bit of a discrepancy in our memory. <laughs> I thought it was more like May that we started the process of considering selling our house because it was the hot summer when we held a garage shell. Well, we won't fight over dates right now. <laughs> His ability to communicate, though, and to speak up for us and to advocate for us and to say, hey, there's these problems in the crawl space and this needs to be repaired. We need the money for it. And Eddie, Eddie from OfferPad, the amazing mortgage agent. I don't know his title. That, He's the one that worked all the numbers. And... He was our numbers guy between selling our house numbers, right? Yes. And buying our house. We used the same agency. And he, you know, when I met him on the phone, he said, you know, I'm a 50 year old dad and I don't. You know, it's like I'm just straightforward. I'm you know, gonna tell you the truth. I forget how he phrased it, but it was of that just honest communication and no BS. And I well he also he was a researcher and digger. He he found different programs that brought our interest rate down yeah, that got the, us money. The house we were gonna we first put an offer on was five thousand over what we had approved for and he found this special program where we pay three percent the government pays two we don't have to pay private mortgage insurance so anyways we wound up backing out of that house because of so many problems it had on inspection but then we had this new program to utilize and then we wound up buying a house that was back to our original budget and amount which was mm -hmm. ten thousand less than what we were going to spend on a house and yeah, so communication is what helped make all these things possible, that we let them know what we needed. Look, Eddie, we need the, the payments to be below this level. And he was great about working the numbers backwards and figuring out interest rates. And as we were going through the process, um, yeah, I mean, without communication. And that's what we, we teach. Uh, and, you know, just as a, a little promo, I guess, is that we're hoping and January, probably mid January or February, to do begin doing our how to talk so kids will listen uh, workshops again, as well as getting out and speaking about how to talk to communicate with aging parents and loved ones and dealing with caregiver situations. For a lot of that, for a lot of us, that is while well juggling raising our own family. Even if our kids don't live at home, we might be supporting them financially or emotionally in some fashion. We are in the midst of that. We have a 14-year-old at home. We have a 21-year-old who could be moving back at home. So as we looked at houses, we wanted to consider that. Our 25-year-old's been great and supportive, and he's really paid attention in the whole process of buying a house because that's something he would hopes to do in the very near future. So I, you know, I I just recently had somebody that I had I had talked to a um, networking group about communication, and it was interesting that this has been, gosh, that was probably two or two and a half, maybe even it, it was before COVID. Uh, so it's been about at least three years that she called me up and she said, "Could you send me that information about how to start a?" A conversation. I had done a, a, a little flyer that talked about, well, one of the big things she was looking for was the, the words you shouldn't use, <laughs> and should is one of those. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I have a list of about 10 words that are not good words to use because they're very they're they're for conversation stoppers. Yeah, they don't. They trigger anxiety. They, they, they make for poor communication. Uh, like the should is one of them. But uh, yeah, always and never can can be. Uh, you know, uh, because what is you know, not many things are always or never. Yeah, and, and well, when you're in the middle of a, a rough conversation or an argument, you they, always do yeah, that. They come out really powerful, and they kind of lock it in your mind that it's true. I love you, honey. But <laughs> <laughs> I love you. But what? Wait a minute. You know, so it, it's 
how you talk to somebody makes a huge difference. And one of the things I know we talk about is how you respond to somebody. And it can make the difference between, a, we say, a 15-minute conversation or an hour-long battle, you know, argument, whatever you want to call it. And people talk about nonverbal communication and how essential that is. Tone of voice, body, language. body language, expression, and little words can create tension and put a halt to things. That's why sometimes I love communicating by text with my kids, even when they're in the house, is it kind of takes away the emotions, that, right. that tension. And you can be very intentional with your words when you're typing. A butt's not going to come out, or you should. Or you can type that. But you can also look it over before you send it. You have that moment of pause, you know, stopping and thinking before we speak. Things have been very tense the past couple of days between us and our 14-year-old especially. And just, just things like figuring out food and finding things. And we've been going back and forth between staying at my parents' house and getting things settled in the new house. And it's about an hour and 10 to 15-minute drive in between the two houses. Where we used to live, it's basically halfway in between that. Yeah. And our son is about 30 minutes from us. He used to be 15. Where am I going? I don't know. <laughs> well, it's that, I guess I wanted to the be the tensions between us. So we've been we've been reacting more to each other. There's been, you know, less we've been overtired and stressed oh, yeah. and eating different foods than usual. You know, I've had a headache for a while. And so all that adds to being in that stressed mode. And when we're in that stressed mode is when we more often react than respond to people. Yeah. And it creates, I know. Well, I, I, I wanted to be kind of the counterpoint on the text, though. Uh, well, just the, in the fact, because it can also, though. Are we on CNN? <laughs> <laughs> Last time I heard that. I think of SNL, but I won't go on that one. You're blending into the wall. Yeah, I know. You didn't wear a good contrasting shirt. To <laughs> oh, I didn't anticipate sitting on the floor doing this, but that uh, we were going to do it outside. Anyway, so just uh, as a... <laughs> Counterpoint. Well, on the, on the text, the other side of it, it, though, it can leave others to kind of guess what the, the mode is behind it. Oh, yeah. The, There's so, certainly times so when it's, it's better talking in person. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of a fine line. I mean, you know, text can be good, but well, it's different also, situations. Yeah. You know, when I want my daughter to come down for dinner, um, oh. sending a text. I'm deep. Rather than, hey, get down here. Get your butt down here for dinner. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I grew up with <laughs> Except it's dinner time. Except you weren't coming downstairs because you live down a one story house. Or, or my, my my neighbor across the street when she, she used to call she had this high pitched, really irritating voice and she'd be calling her kids in for dinner, you know, out from play you know, we used back then we'd be out playing all day. Back in the day. Back in the day. And she was just like and it was just ear piercing the way she would do her screams and her calls for her kids. And we don't realize kids especially highly sensitive kids can, we might not think we're yelling with a slight raise in voice. You know, we have a kid who just registers that is yelling and they feel scolded and in trouble. And it might just be, I'm raising my voice because my hearing is not the way it used to be. And I don't know if people can hear me or huh? I've got things on my mind. <laughs> You're slouching, honey. I like this though. I look taller than you. I know. Well, it's there are sitting We're on the floor. On a really old couch cushion. <laughs> That's all we could find. No. <laughs> yes, this is the neatest room in the house right now. There's nothing in it. <laughs> Except a few things. And uh, we won't show you the rest of the house yeah. today. But well, maybe future podcasts. I don't know if we can safely get through it. <laughs> future podcasts. Or the garage, which is like oh my. jam back. I was box. in the house directing where boxes go and I had no idea you were just having them stack things in the garage with anything labeled with certain bedrooms and bathrooms I wanted to put yeah. in those areas and then I was like but, oh we're all done and then I opened the garage door I thought, oh my <laughs> gosh it's like wall to wall boxes in here I, I wanted to go put the recycles out we have recycle bins now we live in the city and we have garbage pickup and recycle pickup but I'd have to literally open the garage door 
we have piano music this morning. I have to open the garage there, walk around to the other side to get to where those bins are yeah. to put recycling oh. in. And we're, recording. we're on a podcast. Would you like to say hello? <laughs> that you were all... no. no. Yeah, give us two more minutes, please. <laughs> Could you end it? Two, two more minutes, please. Thank you. Communication. <laughs> So it's time to wrap up for today. Well, we know this was short. Um, we just Thank wanted you. to at least keep the, the momentum of our podcast going. So that's why. Reach out, connect with us. We're still on Facebook, Instagram, Focused Healthy Family, our blogs. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to know what topics you want to hear more of. And remember, how you speak to your children today <laughs> shapes their future. And yours. <laughs> <laughs> we'll 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 see you next week. Have a good one. Bye bye.